across Oklahoma gear up for a statewide strike. Less than 24 hours after the Senate shot down the emergency clause to the state's $230 million education reform bill, OEA leaders have asked that all school personnel start withholding services on Monday, even though teacher strikes are highly unusual in the state of Oklahoma. But tragically, the emergency in education continues to exist today because of the no votes of 20 state senators last night. What we will not tolerate as professionals is failure to address the needs of children. We will not tolerate any further the shameful salaries that drive educators out of this profession. At this point in time, we've used every other measure at our disposal. We have taken every action. You all have been here at every step of the way, and you know the steps that we've taken. And I don't believe that we have any other resource left to us at this time. And from my standpoint, there was no other action left to us at that time. If we were willing to walk away from that special session and say, well, we gave it our best shot, that's it, uh, I suppose that might have been a choice for, for some. But quite frankly, uh, there had to be a positive resolution to this special session. There had to be the passage of House Bill 1017. And on Thursday morning, uh, it was very easy to uh, stand before those cameras and say that uh, I was calling for a statewide walkout. I don't see any other option. I really don't. Uh, uh, Most teachers I talk to are at the point to where something has to be done. Because uh, we see students with old books and no books and, uh, and lack of funding is, is just, it's just it's hurting their children. And it, something's got to be done. I think we've come to the point where something drastic has to be done. We've been nice, we've been courteous, we've asked, we've pleaded, we've begged. We've done about everything we could do, I think, and maybe this is what we need to do. All this time, all my years of teaching, which has been 17 years, I've always said I would not strike. I am, I am considering it at this point. We're walking out because we care about kids. We're walking out because their education means something to us. We're walking out because we believe in quality, and we believe that we can no longer sit by and not do something. The governor calls the bill's failure disappointing and a teacher strike potentially destructive. I would think that would be counterproductive. I certainly expect that this kind of demonstration will show that we are concerned, we do care, and we are unwilling to just allow the, uh, the legislature to assume that they've done their job. Good morning, OEA. That question is one of hundreds being raised by teachers across the state. What's going to happen if they leave their jobs? The Oklahoma Education Association, which counts 80% of state teachers as members, is printing up and mailing out information sheets. So far, teachers around Oklahoma appear ready to do whatever it takes. The main purpose here is to determine what we're going to do so we can at least tell the kids. If we're going to turn out Monday, I would like to know. 
Meetings like this one occurred in rural towns across the state. In Meeker, teachers are in favor of a walkout two to one. The superintendent says Meeker Public Schools needs more funding that Bill 1017 could provide. If that means a strike by his teachers, he'll stand behind their decision. At the end of the meeting, Dr. Hewlin Howe now knows his teachers will walk. We're going to let out of school, be gone, and won't be here in school, you or me, Monday, next Monday. Back in the classroom, Celia Graham must explain to her third graders why she and other Meeker teachers will be gone one day next week. She hopes the small school district's message will be heard by more than just these students. Tell them our future. School's out today for Easter, but teachers, administrators, and other staff are preparing for Monday's lesson, the lesson they hope to teach lawmakers about the problems with education in Oklahoma. That's a commitment from the legislators and the people of Oklahoma that we need the money, we need the education reforms, we need it all. Hope these uh, senators and legislators see the light. We need some money. In what could be viewed as the ultimate show of support for the teacher walkout, classes have been called off in Hartshorn for Monday. As one teacher put it, we need to put some feet into this walkout and march them straight up the Capitol steps. Come Monday, as many as 70 school districts across the state could be shut down because of teacher walkouts, finding substitutes will be difficult. And one reason for that is the executive board of the Retired Educators Association voted not to work during the walkout. They have 14,000 members statewide and are included in OEA's membership. Governor Henry Bellman is not supporting the teacher walkout. Today he asked Attorney General Robert Henry to take action to prevent what Bellman calls the illegal disruption of Oklahoma school children. And this is the Attorney General's reply. He says, quote, This office is unable to speculate as to the view that any particular district court may take as to the lawfulness of the teachers' organizations to strike. For teachers to go on strike in the middle of, of, of meaningful negotiations is, is stupid, and that uh, shows that the leadership of the OEA, which is, has reduced themselves to nothing but a labor union, uh, and that's what they've been for the last 12 or 15 years, uh, to go on a strike and punish the children, which does nothing but to, to uh, fill their ego. I feel like the legislators have been totally unresponsive to all of us, <laughs> and the teachers are as frustrated as the parents. And I'm in support of them doing something. I feel we need to do something now. 20 years from now, it will be too late. My kids will be grown. Our teachers are sick and tired of being treated like second-class citizens or as tall children. We want immediate action. We've not seen any action. And we think the only effective way to demonstrate that action is by either demonstrating at the state capitol on Monday and Tuesday or demonstrating or picketing in front of our buildings to let people know that we do care about public education in this state. Educators from Texas, Beaver, and Cimarron counties met in Guymon to discuss their part in the five-day walkout. Uh, first of all, if we're going to walk out, that a lot of people are going to say it's uh, another attempt for teachers to get more salaries, and that isn't the case at all. Uh, what we're after is better funding and continued funding for programs like art and music and some of the things that we feel are necessary in our programs. Panhandle teachers said they'll decide after Easter vacation on Tuesday as whether to join the strike. They will, however, pick at the Capitol on Monday. We're gathering patrons to join us, and I think you will see some very determined people there. I think my best word for the day will be determination. I think in this instance, we saw more than any other time we've ever had that the OEA was a bunch of people. It was a lot of people that believed in something for education, and believed in Oklahoma, and I as the thing that impressed me, I think, as much about the walkout and the outcome of the walkout as anything is the fact that for the first time in a long time, teachers demonstrated that they were leaders, that they took a position of leadership, and the OEA gelled that leadership and brought it together. It was really nice for once to be able to say, yes, I am an Oklahoman and I'm proud to be because of what we were able to accomplish here through our OEA. Erica Bowser from Mobile. Hi, how you doing? Erica is an industrious Thank young you. lady who's concerned about her future Listen, and wants to do something about it. Our, our high school is organizing a um, student rally up at the Capitol tomorrow at 1130. She's going down the list calling other students who are out of school tomorrow and asking them to come to the Capitol 
in support of their teachers' protest efforts. of Oklahoma classrooms are left empty today. Instead of working on the lesson plans, thousands of teachers are working on the battle plans. Four, six, eight, we want you to legislate. Two, four, six, eight, we want you to legislate. They said they were going to do it, and they did. Thousands of school teachers walked off their jobs today and took their voices and their opinions to the steps of the state capitol. Go back on the north side so you can keep an eye on what's going on over there. You got it. We're losing teachers at a tremendous rate, and we've got to attract the best and the brightest. Good morning. Good morning. It has been extremely exhilarating this morning as I walked around the Capitol with you, in fact, the entire Capitol complex, and gratifying to see all of you here today, all of you. The response to the call for a work stoppage has been overwhelming. Our colleagues all across the state are joining with us in picketing in their local districts. At this point in time, over 145 school districts have closed today. Our work stoppage this week is unprecedented in the history of Oklahoma. And as all of you well know, it's not an action that any of us takes lightly. That's right. I think I can safely say that few of us ever expected to be carrying pickets in front of the state capitol when we started our teaching careers. And we've been told that we are setting a poor example for the children we teach by our action. What kind of example is given children when they know their education is last on a priority list? On the first day, uh, a war story I can tell, uh, my daughter brought our two grandchildren, my mother, my sister, and her uh, two children, my sister-in-law and her two children, of course my brother, all walked together. And uh, the night of the final debate, where the emer when the emergency failed, uh, Senator Miles LaGrange, in her very dynamic way, said, we must pass 1017. We can't afford to kick the children of Oklahoma in the teeth. And uh, my 11-month-old grandson, in his little stroller going around the Capitol, had the little sign that hung on the front of him that said, don't kick me in the teeth. <laughs> Oklahoma teachers seem to be everywhere except the classroom. A rally at Driller Stadium drew well over 3,000. Tulsa union leaders vow to keep schools shut down for the rest of the week, despite administrators' hopes of reopening by Wednesday. They can't do that because they can't replace us. We don't have enough subs on a regular day, let alone on a day when we decide to stay home. Based on the Attorney General's opinion, I, I would agree that uh, what the teachers have done is legal. Being here today on the picket line was probably the easiest day. Tomorrow will be more difficult, and Wednesday more difficult still. Our critics' voices will become louder and more strident. The very future of our children is at stake, and I believe we can and will prevail in our struggle together for all of Oklahoma. We 
Instead of slacking, the strike is attracting more teachers, parents, and students. 10,000 in all, 2,000 more than yesterday. Braving the cold weather is insignificant, they say, compared to the importance of their cause. And I'm here to show Oklahoma students that we mean what we say. We care about you, we believe in you, and we are doing what the only thing we can now to show you that's true. Yeah. But we uh, are trying to make a positive statement to the people, especially in, in Hooker, the Panhandle, and even, of course, on the statewide level, that we support public schools in Oklahoma, but that we're also supporting the walkout because we've been backed into a corner. After we had come to the Capitol in full force on Tuesday, I felt that my colleagues began to feel more positive about the situation. Um, they, they felt this same ray of hope that I felt, that we possibly could change some ideas, some attitudes, uh, that we could express to our community uh, the needs that we have there in the classroom and there in our buildings, the needs that our students have most importantly. Boyle was one of several rural schools that joined in the rally today. And what these schools lack in numbers, they make up for in spirit. With all the rural areas coming together, we intend to make the pressure put on the legislature to make a difference. I had a unique opportunity during the week, not only to be in Oklahoma City, but to travel to lots of locals. And I spoke at many rallies, and I thought it was very inspiring. You know, sometimes we, we look at that week and we remember all of those activities at the Capitol, but we forget that in every local, we had teachers who stayed home and who demonstrated locally. And I think that support in the local will be something that we will be drawing on in the future. It was certainly inspiring to me to see the teachers taking a stand at home. Sometimes that's harder than being in a very big group around the Capitol. We are an organization of two million members, and you can be sure that all across this country, the two million members are fully aware of what's happening here and want to show our support here and to do whatever we can to help resolve the problems here in Oklahoma. That's great. That's great. A better thing couldn't have happened. It lets us know that everybody is aware of Oklahoma and what the teachers are going through here. That was the reaction at the Capitol when it was announced Oklahoma City would cancel school on Thursday. They're talking about a compromise, but nobody is sitting down at the table offering a compromise. Senator Darrell Roberts is the majority floor leader. I'm encouraged by the number of people here who are concerned about education. And uh, again, I just say, call home, get the rest of them here. Thank you. Neither rain nor cold could help keep these demonstrators away from the state capitol today. Nearly 18,000 supporters of House Bill 1017 continued their picket lines in day three of the teachers' protest. One, two, three, four, education's on the floor. Five, six, seven, eight, now it's time to legislate. They meet at a Stuckey's convenience stop on I-40 in Seminole County each morning, the 24 teachers of Butner School. They plan strategy. Then they drive 55 miles to the state capitol each day to carry it out. When we, when we arrived, we, we weren't sure what kind of unity there would be. But when we got here and saw the enthusiasm, all the teachers in the state pulling together for one common goal, it was electrifying. We all had to come be a part of it. One of the best stories is on the days that it wasn't raining, when it was lunchtime, they brought picnic lunches, sat on the lawn of the capitol. But on Wednesday, whenever it rained, um, they had to go inside if they were going to find a dry spot. So on all floors, as you would look around, and, uh, there would be uh, people sitting out, sitting on the floor, uh, eating their lunch. And I remember walking in, and these two members, one is saying to the other, gee, do you think we can really go in here and do this? And the other one says, this is our capital, uh, and we ought not to ever forget that. And probably uh, no time like those four days in April was this indeed our capital. I'm a seventh grade science teacher. I have 28 to 31 students in all my classes, and I feel like to be more effective, we need the resources and the smaller classes to allow me to do my job better. And if it takes 
being Dr. Day's pay, to me it's worth it. Will you do it again tomorrow? Yes, I will. I will do it tomorrow, and I will do it Friday. Uh, the 12-month bus drivers get paid, but the non-contract drivers, when we're off, when there's no school, snow days, uh, spring break, Christmas break, when there's no school, the ones without contracts don't get paid. Because I had members calling me, and uh, a couple people from the media, and everybody was trying to figure out what should we do or what's going on or should we go to work or uh, just, you know, they want to know just what was, what was going on. And we called a meeting and we all got together and we discussed the pros and cons and basically everybody felt the same way that uh, we should lend our support to the teachers and uh, with food services to also. The situation with the education funding is like a football game. Hey. It's fourth and goal at the one. There's no time left on the clock, and we're behind in the ball game. If we don't punch it in and score, we lose. The umbrellas have come out, and so have the plastic signs, but you can hear it. They have not lost their enthusiasm at all. It's as if an army has mobilized an assault on the south steps of the state capitol. 20,000 plus picketers, a true indication that this walkout has gained momentum as day five approaches. And it is imperative, imperative, if we are all to do the very best that we can, we must have the investment in that system today, today. The majority of the House is for it. The majority of the Senate is for it. And they've taken the political risk and stood up and voted for it. The governor's for it. I'm for it. You're for it. And we're going to get it done. We're going to let it ring from the hills in eastern Oklahoma to the plains of the Panhandle. And you repeat it after me, never last again. Hang in there, hang in there. I wish, in all honesty, I could tell you that I'm glad to be here today, but I can't say that. But I can, in all honesty, say that I'm proud to be here today with my colleagues in Oklahoma. I guess whenever President Geiger came on Thursday, at the height of the controversy, at the point where the weather was the worst and the crowd was the biggest. And uh, he spoke to them at the rally, and they were all standing out there. I was standing a few feet in back of him. And they're all standing out there. As you look out over the crowd, all you could see were umbrellas and, and people standing with these silly garbage bags over their heads. And, and at every other rally that we had had during the week, they were uh, loud and would break uh, into speeches with applause. And they would cheer, and they would do all kinds of things. But when President Geiger spoke to them, they were quiet and attentive. And, and literally one of the, you could hear a pin drop moments. Uh, and it was, it, it struck me then, the connection that we all have, that, that we weren't simply uh, the Oklahoma Education Association with 20,000 of its members out there, but these were 20,000 members of the two million member National Education Association, and that what we were doing and what these members were doing for themselves, they were also doing for every member of the NEA and every educator all across the country. After months of debate, it all came down to one last meeting in this room where 33 Senate Democrats hashed out a final compromise. Outside, an uncounted crowd of reporters and teachers waited for news. When Democrats finally emerged, five hours later, they had the votes to pass the bill. The bill and finally they realized, you know, it's now or never for Oklahoma. To pick up that lamp of learning and move this state forward. This bill, for the first time, is going to be based on student performances and accountability to the taxpayers. And your role is mighty. Whether you're the educator in the classroom or you are the learner. Young people in the gallery who are students here today, your educators cannot make you learn. If you do not want to be a responsive learner, then you are really abrogating 
a responsibility and an opportunity that people in other countries would die for. We want you in Oklahoma to have this chance. We're going to give you that opportunity with 1017, and it's only the first step. If you let us down as students and as educators, and I know I'm speaking to the choir because I know you're not, it will be a long, long time before anyone on this floor will be able to convince the folks back home that we've got to continue to invest so that our young people have every opportunity in any school in which they might want to attend to graduate, to graduate all students and to be able to be competitive. 30 seconds. Let's all get on that board today. If we're sincere about handing them the lamp so that this state can go forward, let's make that a unanimous vote. I sincerely would appreciate your vote on the bill and on the emergency. We challenge you to implement these changes, to implement these reforms, and to do the best job you know how to do. I know you will do that. We are providing the tools for you to do that. It's up to you to carry it on. Thank each and every one of you, and let's vote this into law. Said we got 32. We have 32, and that's what Bruce said, and he hugged you. Inside and outside the state capitol, educators waited patiently through tense moments as the Senate vote was counted down. With piercing screams, hugs, and tears, they welcomed the news they had longed for for nine months. Education reform was now a reality, no longer just a dream. It's worth it. It's worth it. It's been worth it. I think we can go back to school tomorrow. It's not often you'll see this many people simply ecstatic about going back to work. But this time, it's for the kids. To think we have worked this hard and put so much of ourself, our soul, our heart, for, for not just all the children of Oklahoma, but to see other states that if you stand together, how much you can accomplish. Now, the labor pains have been terrible, but the baby is worth it. <laughs> The cheers echoed through the halls of the state capitol after the vote. There were hugs, handshakes, and even tears. I am very, very pleased that finally that compromise has been reached, and indeed it appears that education reform and revenue is going to become a reality in Oklahoma. Now, all along you, there was talk of compromise, but you said you wouldn't settle for anything less than the $230 million education bill. Does this satisfy that? It does meet that, that requirement. I like to think of Thomas Edison's quote when he said, if we did all that we're capable of doing, we would literally astound ourselves. And we've done that a little bit, but there's much more that we're capable of doing. I feel very excited about what's going to happen in this state with education, with our members in the OEA. Um, I think we're going to open this school year with renewed vigor and enthusiasm and with the idea that we can make a bigger difference than we've been able to make in the past. A new day is dawning for education in Oklahoma. Our state will no longer take a back seat among, the other, mother, among states where education is concerned. From now on, others can look to Oklahoma for leadership in education. I would have to say that the teachers had a very constructive impact. I didn't think that was likely, but I was wrong. What role do you think the teacher strike played in the passage of the emergency clause today? Well, there's no question about it. The bill was dead before they got here. They made the difference, and it wasn't a strong arm thing or anything like that. It was just a simple outpouring, a physical demonstration of commitment and concern, and uh, it was just something that you had to see to understand. And just the thought of professional people uh, by the thousands standing out in the rain to try to show their concern and commitment, uh, it made the difference. 
something remarkable happened in Oklahoma this week at a time when many of us feel that we don't or can't make much of a difference. Thousands of Oklahoma teachers doing what they do best, educating, taught us all a valuable lesson. They made individual decisions to leave their classrooms, to walk picket lines, to chant, sing, and demonstrate for their cause, and they made a difference. In four days, all those teachers, and the thousands and thousands of citizens, parents, business people, and students who supported them, changed the balance of power in Oklahoma. House Speaker Steve Lewis said today, it was rather poignant to see grown men and women, professional people, standing out in the rain. A challenge remains to make those reforms they voted in work to see Oklahomans get their money's worth for higher taxes. But for now, don't blame the teachers and supporters of education everywhere if they want to pause and savor just for a little while this moment. To watch history being made is exciting. To make history must be doubly so, perhaps nearly as exhilarating as teaching itself, the most civilizing of professions. Turn me around, turn me around, turn me around, and gonna let the state legislature turn me around.